Hello, good morning to all the students. Okay, good morning, Yiru, Zihui, Esther. Okay, can you see me or not? Okay. So just respond, you can listen to me, then I can start my lesson. Okay, thank you. So I will start now. Good morning, Katija. Uh, no Queen. No Queen is here. Zihui is here. Okay. So today we go to the new subtopic. There's a 5.2. Okay, they're still under electronic. Okay, let's see what is that. Okay, that's a lesson 5.2. Uh, semiconductor diodes. Okay, semiconductor diodes. Okay, we go to introduction. What is a semiconductor first? Okay, so first one, we're going to see the material can be classified. Okay, got three types. First one, you can see the diagram. We got plastic, we got wood. This one is under insulator. Okay, they do not conduct any electricity. Okay, number two, you can see this one is a copper wire. Then some of the utensil material in the kitchen, they made by the metal. So this one is a under conductor. That means they can conduct electricity and also it's a heat conductor. Okay, number three, you can see this one. They're just like the stone. Okay, this one is called germanium and also silicon. This one is under semiconductor. Okay, you can see the word semi. Semi means half. They can conduct, but got situation, special situation, they can conduct electricity. So today we need to concentrate is for the semiconductor. Okay, we're going to see the semiconductor for the uh, introduction and also the explanation for the definitions. Okay, semiconductor material that has electrical conductivity. Okay, but there's a between the conductor and also the insulator. Okay, they're not perfect like the conductor, but they're better than the insulator. Okay, so first one, you see the resistance. Okay, the electricity resistance. There's a between the conductor and also insulator. Okay, example, semiconductor, we got two types. One we call silicon, another one should be the germanium. So remember these two names. That's a semiconductor example. Okay, how about the conductivity? Conductivity for the electricity. Okay, they can conductivity, but the situation, you must increase the temperature. So that means you need to heat it. Okay, you need to heat it. That means they can conduct electricity. How they conduct ele electricity? Then sure, it's an electron. They must have the electron start to move. Then we can conduct electricity. So from here, we got to say about the charge carriers. Okay, they got charge carriers. They got positive and also the negative. So the positive, we call it as a hole. Okay, then the negative, they call it as an electron. So that means when the electron, they start to move, they will fill in the hole. When they fill in the hole, that means we say the charge now start to uh, moving. Okay, start charge to moving. So that means the situation, the current can be stuck. So you need to create the situation until the electron that can start to jump. Okay, they can start to jump. So that means finally the current can be flow. Okay, now we're going to see how the semiconductor can be function. Okay, we do the comparison between the energy gap for the insulator, semiconductor, and also conductor. Okay, you can see the gap. That's a big difference, huh? You see the conductor, electron, they want to go to conduction band. That's a easier because they stick together. No band. No band, that means the electron, they're easy to move. Okay, they're easy to move, then you conduct electricity. Okay, you see the semiconductor, they got one of the gap at the middle. So this one, electron, they need to jump. Jump over the gap, then go to the conduction band, then they can conduct electricity. So how to make the electron can be jumped? So that means we must have the uh, temperature increasing. Temperature increasing means you need to heat it. Okay, you provide the car, uh, provide the uh, voltage, go to heat it. Then the electron can be jumped. 
Then after that, over the narrow band, after that, they can conduct electricity. Okay, how about the uh, insulator? Insulator, you can see this one, the band should be wider. Okay, there is a more than elect the electrical potential energy, there's a five. So that means the electron, you need to make it to move. You need to overcome this one electrical potential energy. So that's why insulator, they cannot conduct electricity. Okay, because there's a big band. After that, you want to overcome the big band. After that, the electron can go there. Then you conduct electricity. So that's why the insulator, there's a totally cannot conduct electricity because the band is too wider okay so from here we focus for the semiconductor okay let's see the semiconductor how to go to create first okay there's a charge carries in the semiconductor a silicon we take the silicon as an example first a silicon atom got four valences okay they got four valences it means they has four valence electrons so every student know one uh, one circle must at least got eight electron, is it? But the silicon only got four electron. So they need to share. Okay, they need to share with each other. So they are shared between the four others neighboring atom to form covalent bonds. So that means you can see covalent bond is here. They're sharing. So when they're just sharing, eight, uh, four plus four, then they become eight. So at the room temperature, the silicon just like the insulator. They cannot conduct electricity because the atom have no free electron. The electron cannot move. So that's why you don't have any free electron. So in the room temperature, they're still insulator. But when the temperature just increase, so the vibration is in the lactin increases. So the electron, they start to vibrate. After that, they need to jump. When they just jump, so that in this situation, we call it, now they can conduct electricity. So this one is a valence electron. So this one we call covalent when they're just sharing. Okay, so this one is a one of the silicon. When they just join together, that means you need to sharing about the uh, electron. So they become eight electron. So this one is a structure for the semiconductor. Okay, now we can see the vibration. Okay, this one is a structure for semiconductor. They still got valence hole. Can you see the hole? Hole is yellow color. Then the valence electron, there's a, a blue color. So that means the electron that will jump. They will jump to fill in the hole. So you see the free electron when they just jump fill in the hole means the electron now start to move. Actually, the hole is never moved. Only the electron jump jump then fill in the hole so that's why finally you find the electron they start to moving so the current they will start to flow okay in opposite directions the vibration of the atom okay you provide the heat then the atom can be vibrate causes some electron to break free the bond okay now the electron they can break free the bond then the electron they will remove from a covalent bond so covalent bond, the electron will be removed. Then after that, it left behind where we can see this one we can see we call it as a hole. So that means electron they start to move. When they just move out from the hole, uh, that one we can see we call it as a hole uh, because electron already moved out. So that hole is a positive charge. So electron in the hole they become neutral. Now the electron they move out. So you got one of the we can see. The one we call it as a positive charge. There's a hole. Free electron, there's a negative charge. And the hole is a positive charge. So they are know about the charge carriers. So that means when the electron just jump, we call it now is the charge carriers. Conduction in a semiconductor is a movement of the free electron and the hole in opposite direction. Actually, you can see about the electron to jump. Okay, electron jump, they go forward. Okay, the hole actually, they never move one. Okay, you just see the hole just like go backwards. Lah. The important is electron jump only. Okay, electron jump to fill in the hole. Actually, the hole is never move. Okay, we just see the hole want to move backward. Actually, it's no. Only the electron jump only. Okay, 
So semiconductor cannot conduct electricity as well as the metal because they are have smaller number of free electron and also the hole. Okay, so that means semiconductor if don't have any heating, don't have any high temperature, actually they cannot conduct electricity because they just only got small number of electron and also the hole. So you want let it to function, so you need to increase the temperature. Then after that, the electron, free electron, now they can jump. Okay, when they just jump through the hole, that means now they can conduct electricity. So that means they need the help from the, uh, uh, the high temperature. Okay, so this one is a characteristic. How the semiconductor to conduct electricity. Okay, you need to help to make the electron to move. Okay, when they just move out from the hole, that means they keep moving already. Okay, they keep moving, that means the hole empty, then the electron out. Then another electron will fill in another hole. So like this, the situation, we call it as a conduct electricity. Okay, what will happen if a potential difference is applied across the semiconductor? So we apply potential difference. Eh? So we apply potential difference, that means actually we apply the temperature. Okay, we never say about the heating. Eh? We're never using the Bunsen burner go to heat. For the electronic, sure, they provide the heat by using the voltage. Okay, using the power supply, provide the voltage. So the free electron, they are attracted to the positive terminal. The valence electron in the neighboring atom are then pushed to occupy the hole. Okay, the valency electron, they come out. <clears throat> After that, they move. After that, they need to fill in another hole. But the process, they create other hole. Okay, if you are already, you got another hole, is it? Which will later be occupied by another electron. So that means they come out, they go and find a hole. Another hole also empty. Another electron will come in to occupy. So continuous. Lah. <coughs> okay, movement of the electron in the opposite direction as movement of the hole. Your movement of the electron go to left hand side. You just let the hole move to the right hand side. Okay, the pattern opposite direction. The movement of the electron and the hole contribute flow of current. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can see the diagram like this. Okay. Okay, this one is a hole. Then the electron that keep jumping. Okay, when the electron keep jumping, actually you see the hole like go to opposite direction. Actually, the hole is never moving. Only the electron move only. So this one is a diagram. <coughs> okay, free electron carry negative charge. Hole carry positive charge. So you can see the electron. When I keep jump, actually the hole is never moved. Only the electron go to fill in the hole. So electron moving to the left equal hole moving to the right hand side so this one we call it as a flow of the current okay when the potential difference is applied to the semiconductor okay now we're going to see topping okay another situation we can make the electron to move okay just now we say potential difference is it now if i do want using the potential difference how to create the electron moving in the uh, semiconductor. Okay, excuse me, I go to drink water first. <coughs> 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 okay, so from here, not only for potential difference. We can use in doping. You see this one, doping actually was the meaning. Eh? Okay, doping is the process of adding the small amount of impurity to the semiconductor. So that means we add some of the uh, atom inside the semiconductor. So this one atom we call impurity lah, to the semiconductor. After that, we can conduct electricity. So that means when I add the atom in, I can create the electron to move. So this process, we call it as a topic. Okay, now we're going to see. Uh, 
conductivity of the semiconductor can, can increase. First one, we say increase temperature. Lah. Just now we explained already. Number two is acting the impurity to the semiconductor. Okay, so you can see the diagram here. This one is a silicon, is it? Suddenly, the center, they got phosphorus. So this one, we call it as an impurity. I go to add it. Okay, now I go to explain. How come you add the impurity, then they can conduct electricity? Okay, we go and see the explanations. Okay, the process of stopping of semiconductor. Okay, atom of the impurity at should have almost same size. Okay, we cannot say over, over bigger size. Silicon got four electron, uh, but electron is it. So that means you add the atom, you go in the uh, semiconductor, you must almost the same size. Example, three electrons. Or example, five electron. So that means you cannot add over. So you need to add the impurity almost the same size as the semiconductor. So this one is a, as the same size as the atom of the intrinsic of the semiconductor. Now we're going to see this part. Okay, by adding the different kind of the impurity, two type semiconductor can be obtained. When we add the semi, uh, add the impurity, they can create two type of the semicon. First one we call it as an n type. Okay, n stand for what? Negative. P stand for positive. So that means when I just add the impurity, they can create two type of semiconductor. Okay, now we go to see which impurity we need to add. Okay, we go one by one. Okay, let's see P-type. P-type semiconductor. P-type means positive. Huh? Positive type of the semiconductor. Okay, now can, you can see the diagram. Huh? Diagram got B. B stands for boron. Okay, boron. Okay, then after that, it will show one of the um, blue color is an electron. Then you can see red color circle. The red color circle, actually, there's a hole. Okay, they got one of the empty hole. Why they can create one empty hole? Because, because you can see the boron. Boron only got three electrons. Okay, silicon got four, is it? Then after that, the sharing. Lah. So you can see the boron, they only got three electrons. So that means the extra one of the hole. Okay, if you got extra one of the hole, that means now you are create. Okay, create the situation, let the electron to come in. Okay, now we're going to see the explain one by one. Eh? So what uh, impurity they go to add? They go to add the impurity must be trivalent. Trivalent, tri means three. Eh? Okay, trivalent, uh, the atom must have trivalent, that means three electron only. So after that, when they just add the trivalent, you produce P type. P type semiconductor. Why P type? Because you got extra one hole. Extra one hole it means you extra one positive charge. Okay, before that I told you the hole is a positive, is it? So that means P stand for positive. So now this situation we call it as a P type semiconductor because you extra hole. Okay, you extra the hole. So from here, we got doping material. So that means the impurity. Lah. So example, we got boron. Boron is a trivalence. Aluminium also is a trivalence. After that, we got gallium and also the indium. Okay, so this four is an example to create P-type semiconductor. Okay, the rule of doping material atom, they call atom receiver. Okay, now the P-type semiconductor we can call it as a atom receiver what they want to receive they want to receive the electron okay so from here the majority charge for the p type there's a what there's a hole positive charge minority that means the last one should be the free electron so this one is a characteristic how to build the p type semiconductor okay easy only we go to memorize like this Okay, this one is a hole. Huh? Okay, using 3P. Okay, 3P is what? 
trivalent p-type semiconductor. Okay, we're using trivalent three electron. Then you produce p-type semiconductor. Then buggy is what? Buggy stands for boron, aluminium, G is a gallium, and the last one is indium. So this one, three P buggy, we can go to memorize about the P-type semiconductor. Okay, when P-type semiconductor, you can say the majority sure is a hole, then the minority must be electron. Okay, so this one is a P-type. Okay, after P-type, that means later I need to explain about the N-type, how to create the N-type. Okay, p-type semiconductor. We're going to explain the p-type first. Okay, you can see about this one video clip. Okay, silicon. So they put the impurity. Now they put aluminium. So aluminium actually only got three electron. So they got one of the empty hole. Can you see the yellow color is a hole? Uh, now you can see the electron that keep keep moving, keep moving to fill in the hole. Ah, now this means the situation they conduct electricity. The electron already start to move. Okay, so they keep to fill in the hole. Ah. So from here, you can see the P-type semiconductor. Okay, P-type semiconductor is a produced when the trivalent atom, they are add to the semiconductor atom. Only formed by the trivalent three bond atom are complete. So the vacancy now is a hole with positive charge. Majority is a hole, minority is an electron. The trivalent atom will accept any free electron to fill in the hole. It also can call it as an acceptor atom. So from here, I add the boron. So you can see they got one of the free hole. So this hole is empty, so they let the electron to move it. So when the electron just start to move, that means we can say they conduct electricity. Okay? Pure semiconductor cannot conduct electricity. Only the electron after they add the atom in, we call impurity, doping, then they can conduct electricity. Okay? So when I just add the doping, I can create two types of the semiconductor. So this one is the first type. There's a positive type. There's a p-type semiconductor extra is a hole so we call it as a p-type okay so from here we go to the next that's an n-type okay n-type semiconductor they're not extra hole the extra electron because they're called negative type okay now you see the negative type first one we need to add the impurity must find electron if you add five electrons, so that means now you are extra one electron. So the example impurity I add must be pentavalence. Penta is a five. Okay. So when I just add already, they create become n-type semiconductor. So doping material example, uh, pentavalent, we got antimony. Antimony got five electron. Then we got phosphorus, also five electron. Then we got arsenic, also is a five electron. <clears throat> this tree is an example lah, for the impurity for five electron. Okay, rule of topping material. This one, after I add ready, this one become donor. <clears throat> Just now it's acceptor, is it? They want to accept the electron. Now I'm a donor because I'm a donate. I want to donate the electron to others. So I can say I as a donor at the Okay, majority now is what? Free electron. Minority now is a hole. So from here, how to memorize? So we put Pn. Uh, sorry, phi n. Phi is stand for penta. Okay, n for the n-type. So apa, what is apa? A stand for antimony. P is a phosphorus. Then A is a arsenic. Okay, so this is a uh, uh, n-type semiconductor how to create okay now you're going to see the n-type semiconductor okay first one you can see about the this one video a little bit short video lah. they go to create the electron okay electron how they go to move uh, same like just now the electron extra okay this one is heated when it just heat they find the electron they start to move 
So this one just show you the sample, how the electron go to fill in the hole. Uh, you can see the electron, they keep fill in the hole when they just start to moving. Okay, we're going to see the explanation first. Okay. Uh, n type semiconductor that's a produce when the pentavalence atom they are add into the semiconductor. So pentavalence is what meaning? Five valence electron. Okay, every pentavalence atom they donate a free electron because there will be one extra electron. So majority now is a free electron, minority is a hole. So the pentavalent atom will supply the free electron. We call it as a donor atom. So from here, you can see they put the antimony put in. When they just put in, they got one free electron. So this one, we create n type semiconductor. Okay, so this one is how we go to produce the semiconductor until they can conduct electricity. Okay, you can create two types only, either P-type and the N-type. So the process for doping is one to create the P-type and uh, the uh, N-type. So that means we just got two of the way how to make the, con uh, the semiconductor can conduct electricity. First one, increase the temperature. Number two, by the process of doping. Okay, they can conduct electricity. Okay, so I already introduced the semiconductor. How the semiconductor can conduct electricity by two way. Okay, so now we're going to see this part. The transmission of the electrical power to consumer through the network is in form of the alternating current, remember? Okay, for the power station. Power station, they provide the, uh, the current is the alternating current. So, however, in our everyday the life, many electrical uh, uh, devices, they can only function by direct current. So, what we need to do, we need to convert, is it? So, therefore, the alternating current has to be convert, become direct current. Okay. So, I need to bring the semiconductor to come in already. Okay. So, the first, we need to know what's the function for semiconductor. Okay, combination of the p-type and semiconductor n-type, we can produce diode. So today I want to introduce is a semiconductor diode. So semiconductor diode is how to create. They must combine p and also n together, then they become diode. So this one is a diagram and also the symbol for the diode. So one part is joint p-type, another part the joint n-type. When they combine together, so this one we call semiconductor diodes. So p-type they join with the anode, then the n-type they join with the cathode. So this one is a positive, another side should be negative. So when connection must be correct, eh? when they join with power supply, your connection must be follow, follow the positive and also the negative. Okay, this one is a symbol. Okay, normally you draw the circuit we using symbol only. Okay, remember one of the triangle. Okay, the back side of the triangle must join with the anode. Then the head of the triangle, they join with the cathode. So this one is a structure diagram of the semiconductor diodes. Okay, so just now it's introduced for semiconductor how to create P-type and N-type. Now, important, we need to join these two types that now become diodes. Okay, so we go through diode the functions. Okay, this is a one of the activity 5.4 from your textbook. Okay, we need to discuss about the function for semiconductor diodes. So from here, we're just using diode, dry cell, okay, cell holder, bulb, and also connecting wire. Okay, we want to test. Okay, we want to test about the diode what situation there can be function. Okay, first one, we connected the diode in forward bias. Uh, this one, you must remember what means of forward bias. Okay, forward bias is a positive terminal of the dry cell. It's connected to the anode. Positive terminal connected to the anode. So that's a correct line, is it? Positive, joint positive. Okay, how about the negative terminal? Negative terminal, they go after that to the cathode. 
So that means this one connection is okay. Connection is okay. So we call it as a forward bias. Okay. So we observe the bulb. Lah. So now the bulb can be light up. So that means this one situation means the current can go through the semiconductor. After that, come back. Then the bulb can be light up. So this one situation, we call it as a forward bias. Okay. Now we go to number three. Number three, I need to reverse. Reverse the connection. So I go to reverse the battery. Lah. Okay, reverse the battery. Now the negative, I join with... Uh, I join with the, sorry, at the ballet to label, is it? Uh, this one should be positive. Okay, this one positive, this one should be negative. Huh? So the connection, the label wrong about the positive and negative. So the direction, the direction connection for the semiconductor is the same. Just, they go to reverse the battery. So this one negative, when they just go to the positive, actually cannot function. So another one, the down one should be positive. Then they go up, this one is a negative, huh? They go to negative, then they also cannot function. So this one we call it as what? Reverse bias. Okay, reverse bias. Uh, you have me to change about the laboring. Laboring for the positive and negative. So that means now this situation we call it as a reverse bias. Reverse bias means the connection you connect. to sambo, salah. So that means finally you can see the bug that does not light up. Why does not light up? Because no current. The whole circuit is no current. So from here, uh, I can introduce two new keywords for you. Forward bias and reverse bias. Forward bias means the circuit can function. Reverse bias means the circuit cannot function. Okay? <clears throat> now we need to explain why. Why reverse bias for the B? Why the A become forward bias? Okay, important is connection. The connection you never follow. If you never follow, means a semiconductor cannot function. Okay, so this is a one of the activity they want to prove semiconductor how to function. Okay, now we're going to see the sum of the question. Okay, after... You do the activity, then we're going to see the question, then you can understand more. Okay, what is the function of the diode in this activity? <clears throat> okay, we see the function for diodes now is what? They just allow the current flow one direction. Agree or not? So that means when I just put a positive like this, okay, now the current flow to the right-hand side. Okay, if I tabulate my terminal, can current move in opposite direction? <coughs> actually cannot because the semiconductor they block they don't let the current move in opposite direction they just let the current go in one direction unless you go to tabulate the, the uh, semiconductor if the semiconductor you never change the position actually they just let the current flow positive to negative okay they never let the current flow negative to positive no okay so the function First, for the diode is what? Allow the current flow in one direction only. Okay? So this one is a function for diodes. Okay? Only let the current flow in one way. Eh? Okay, state the condition when the diodes allow the current to pass through. So the condition means the bulb can be light up. Lah. We call forward bias. If the dry cell, the chain to alternating current, ah, dry cell, ah, this one is direct current. If I change alternating current, what will happen to the bulb? Okay, what will happen to the bulb? So your bulb can be light up and off, light up and off because you're using alternating current. So from here, the bulb will be light up and also light off alternately. Okay, because the semiconductor just let you to go one way. So when the first connection is okay, then they light up. Second connection is turbulate because you're using AC, is it? Alternating up and down. Okay, good morning, Anna Jonathan. Okay, so this one is a uh, function for the semiconductor diodes. Okay, now how a diode is produced. Okay, how the diode is produced. So we go to explain. 
A diode is formed by joining a p-type and also the n-type semiconductor. Then they p uh, they produce p uh, the diodes. Okay. Then after that, you can see this word. A diode is formed by joining p-type with a uh, n-type to form a p-n junctions. Okay. This one is a new word. P-n junction. Okay. P and n they join. Then they become semiconductor diodes center they got one of the junction okay p and n center got one junction so this one junction we call it as a p n junctions okay now we see what's the function for this p n junctions huh? okay semiconductor diodes is allow the current to flow through in one direction only. So this one is a definition for semiconductor diodes. Uh, not definition. There's a function. Function for the semiconductor diodes. Okay. So from here, first we say how to create the semi uh, the p type and type. After that, how to create semiconductor diode when they join together. Then we mention about function of the diodes. Okay. Then the following must go to p n junctions. Okay, when they mix together, they got one of the junction at the center. So we go through. Okay, PN junction. You can see the diagram here. P join the N. Okay, center, they got one of the line that separate, separate the P and also the N. We call it as a junction. So this one junction, P and N at the center. So we call it as a PN junction. Okay, PN junction. <clears throat> Okay, a PN junction is formed when the N type and the P type semiconductor when they just join. So they form PN junctions. A boundary between the P type and also N type region is called junction. Okay, the boundary yeah, between left and right, the center we call junction. At the PN junction, electron from the N side move to the P side and recombine with the hole. So electron from here later, they will jump. Okay, they will jump over the junction to fill in the hole. Okay, then after that, the hole from the P side, similarly, they move into the N side where they recombine with the electron. So that means actually it's an electron to move. Like the hole is never move one. Just the electron, they go to fill in the hole. Then you can see the hole like moving to the right hand side so they put the word similarly they just like the hole is moving to left uh, moving to right then the electron moving to the left through where through the pn junction okay so this one is a following uh, process when the electron they start to conduct electricity lah. so the electron must be jump jump over the junction then to fill in the hole okay so now when they jump the junction, ah, you can see this part. Just now we call junction is the borderline, is it? So when they just jump already, so they create one region. Okay, they create one of the region already. This one region, we call it as a depletion region. Okay, depletion region. We can say depletion layer. So when the P-type semiconductor material in the con that with the n type semiconductor material the layer they call it as a depletion layer is formed in the middle okay just now we call junction is it so when they jump ready actually they got one of the area this area we call it as a depletion layer okay depletion layer so uh at this one region the electron from the n type okay electron from the n type material and the hole from the p type they will drift, drift each other across the junction, okay, causing the depletion layer become narrow region. So that means when they just start to cross over, cross over to each other, this one depletion layer, they will become thinner and thinner. Why thinner? Because they're easy to move, lo. easy to left them to drift. After that, electricity easy to conduct. And this one is with the situation when they can conduct electricity. Lah. So can you see the uh, short GIF here? Huh? You can see the electron. 
Okay, they move closer. After that, they create the depletion region. Okay, this one is an example. So the electron, they drift. Then the hole, they go to drift. So you find it, they become one of the region. Then the region, we call PN junction. Okay, this one called PN junction. Eh? This one junction, then they join PN junction. Then the region, we call it as a depletion region. PN junction is the line. Okay, depletion region is the area. Okay, the area, yellow color area. When they start to move, this area will become thinner. Because they want to let them easy to be drift, they can conduct electricity. So the student will ask, can this one region become wider? Can this one region also can be wider? What situation they become wider? When the current cannot conduct, when the electron and also the hole cannot drift. They're far away. So you find this one junction, they become thicker. Okay. So this one junction actually function, they just will let the electron and hole moving only. Okay, let them to jump over this one junction. Okay, so from here, I introduce the junction, then I introduce a depletion layer. The following, we want to see about thinner and also thicker, what happened. Okay, so we continue. Okay, depletion layer again. Eh? So this part we call depletion layer. P type, N type, they join. Then they got junction. After that, when they drift, they produce one of the layer. So this one layer called depletion layer. Okay, regarding for the different charge semiconductor, a potential different acting the N type material to P type material across the junction. This potential different, we call it as a junction voltage. Okay, now I need to introduce is junction voltage. Okay, when they drift negative to positive hole, then the hole like moving to the negative through the depletion layer. So this one depletion layer, they got voltage. This one depletion layer, they got voltage. So we say different charge semiconductor, a potential difference. They will acting to this one layer. So we call it as a junction voltage. So that means not simply electron you need to overcome, you know. You're not simply you want to move to the junction. You must over the junction voltage. So they got one of the potential different at this one depletion layer. So that means you need to overcome. If you cannot overcome, that means you cannot jump. Lah. Okay, so this one potential different, we call it as a junction voltage. So the junction voltage is to prevent the charge carries from drifting across the junction. So they got rules, lah, not simply you want to come my house, is it? I got rules. Lah. You come my house, you first one, you must know me, you must know my family. Ah, this one is a rules. So that means electron you want to jump, they also got the rules. The rules is what? You must over the junction voltage. You will over the junction voltage, then I let you to come, lah. So this one, we call it as a potential difference. They want to prevent, prevent the electron to drifting. So from here, you can see the diagram. This one is an N-type, this one is a P-type. So the electron, they will move, move to fill in the hole. So from here, the center yellow color, this one we call depletion region. This one, depletion region, they got charge. So they got positive and negative. So they will create one potential difference. So this one potential different, we call it as a junction voltage. Okay, so this one is semiconductor when they just join, what happened? Not simply go, you know, they must have something you overcome the rules, then the electron can move. So important, now I want to move, I need to overcome the junction voltage. Okay, how to overcome junction voltage? Okay, now we're going to see how to overcome, huh? Okay, junction voltage. Uh, they got potential different. That means they're just like one of the battery here. Okay, they got one of the voltage. You need to overcome this one voltage. Then I let you to go. So the function for the junction voltage they across the junction is to prevent the charge carries from drifting across the junction. So the value is very small. Only. Don't scare. The value, if I'm using silicon, only 0 0.6 volt. 
Okay, if I'm using germanium, only 0 0.1 volt. So that means the situation is, if your connection, remember the connection? Just now I say the n-type must join with the negative. <coughs> then the p-type, then join with the positive. When the connection is okay. When the connection is okay, means your voltage must over 0 0.6 and 0 0.1. Agree or not? One battery is how many volt? 1.5 volt already, is it? So 1.5 volt, when I just put in, then I connect, it's okay. That means actually it's no problem. Because you already over 0 0.6, you also over 0 0.1. Is it? Because germanium and silicon, the volt very small only. So when your connection is okay, that means the electron now they can drift. What situation junction voltage don't let you to go? The situation is when you connect wrong. Your connection is wrong. Although you're using how many volt for the battery, if your connection is wrong, no volt. Lo. If no volt, how to overcome the junction voltage? So the electron also cannot drift. Okay, so from here you can see the condition of the electric current to flow across the PN junction. If they're connected, the dry cell is the voltage applied across the diode mass over junction voltage. Okay, you want the semiconductor to function. First one important, your connection must be correct. Okay, your connection is correct means your potential difference now is over junction voltage so the electron can be drift easily so this one is a one of the thing you need to let the semiconductor to function that means your connection must be correct when you just correct that means you overcome all the thing already junction voltage you over then the electron can be drifting okay now i show you this one is a germanium you can see the germanium they only got 0 0.1 volt Okay, only for 0 0.1 volt. So if I'm using silicon, they're only 0 0.6 volt. If you overcome, that means you call forward bias. If you less than the germanium and silicon, uh, the potential different, so you call reverse bias. Okay, remember the forward bias and reverse bias just now. I show you the bulb, is it? Forward bias means the bulb can be light up. How the bulb can be light up? Because the semiconductor can function, no? Okay, how come the semiconductor can be function? Because your potential different connection is correct. When you just correct, that means the potential different, they can overcome junction voltage. So the electron, they're easy to be drifting. When it just drift, okay, then the circuit functions. Okay, so this one is what I want to explain about forward bias. How to create forward bias. Okay. So from here, we over to see forward bias again. Eh? Okay, forward bias connection is okay. You see the connection is okay. Okay, positive join positive, negative join negative. Okay, part one. Part one, we're talking about connection. P type, connect to positive. N type, connect to negative. Okay, number two, we're talking about junction voltage. The cell voltage greater than junction voltage. The battery now, the potential different, more than the junction voltage. So when it's just more than junction voltage, what happened? Number three, we're talking about the layer. The layer. Huh? So when the uh, voltage you can over, now the electron can drift, is it? Electron can drift, now the layer will become narrow. Depletion layer become narrow. And the resistance of the diode decreases. When resistance just decreases, current easy to move ready. So finally, a large current flow through the diode and the bulb can be light up. Okay, so this one is how to explain the forward bias. The question just can become up. Please explain the forward bias until using the forward bias, the concept to explain how come the bulb can be light up.
Okay, so you need to explain about the connection for the semi. Then you're talking about the junction voltage. Then you're talking about the narrow for the depletion layer. Then you say about the resistance become low, current flow through. So you need to mention about step one until step four. This one for forward bias. So for reverse bias, I think that's a no problem. Lah. They're just the ballet to explain. Okay, so you need to mention about the depletion layer for reverse bias. They become wider. Okay, depletion layer become wider. Then how about resistance? Resistance become very, very high. When the resistance become very high, finally, no current flow through, then the bulb cannot light up. So that one is a reverse bias. Okay, then we go reverse bias. Eh? So suppose for your, you know, forward bias, reverse bias, there's a no problem. Okay, you can see the diagram. Depletion layer become wider already. They cannot move. So first one, we're talking connection. Now your connection is the valid. P type go negative. N type go positive. Okay, how about a junction voltage? Now you are less than junction voltage already because your connection is wrong. No voltage provided. So the cell voltage is lower than junction voltage. Okay, then number three, layer. The depletion layer become wide. And also the resistance is very, very high. Last one. Last one, we're talking about the current. So no current flow to the bulb and the bulb does not light up. Okay, so this one we call it reverse bias. So I bring so many things from the semiconductor until here. Actually, I want to explain about forward bias and reverse bias. Okay, hopefully you understand about these two things. Eh? Okay, so actually they will finish. Important in forward and reverse. So I need to bring just now all the PN junction, depletion layer to explain about the structure first. Then I go through to forward and reverse bias. Okay, hopefully you do understand. You can recall back the video or you do know you can uh, PM me to ask the question. Okay, what you need to do today is uh, uh, I will give you one of the Google form. Google form is about today, lah, the forward bias and reverse bias. I got one of the code. Okay, anybody can help me to type the code. Lah. The code is hashtag. Okay, you put a hashtag. Then you type diode. Diode is a capital letter. D-I-O-D-E. Then you hashtag again, one, two, three, four. Okay, so anybody there, they can help to type. Then you help me to type that. You put hashtag first. Okay, you put the hashtag. Okay, I go find my hashtag first. Huh? Hashtag, after that, diode is a capital letter. Okay, then you hashtag again. You put the hashtag again. Then the number, one, two, three, four. Okay? Uh, hopefully, that's correct. Huh? Okay, I got pin here. Okay, uh, Katija also pin there. Okay, Google form code uh, for your attendance. Uh, hopefully, all the students key, uh, <clears throat> key in the Google form as to their attendance. Okay, thank you, Ling Han. Okay, so the next one is I already upload the Google form, uh, so Google Classroom exercise. Okay, Google Classroom exercise, you need to turn in. Uh. Okay, I said the time is uh, Sunday. Sunday is a due date. So you need to turn in the exercise before the Sunday. That one is your PBD score marks. Okay. So from here today, got two homeworks uh, you need to do. This one you must do first. Okay. For your attendance. Uh, very important. Okay. So this one is another one. Uh, this one I already upload in your Google Classroom. Okay. As your PBD homework. Okay. So today lesson just until here. So hopefully the student, you understand about the semiconductor. This one only halfway. The next lesson, the uh, Thursday. I will give you the series two. That one is a, a application for the semiconductor. Okay. So from here, just thank you for your watching. So thank you all my students, uh, for sci uh, five science two students. Okay. And the other students that join the class. Okay. We see you on Thursday again. Okay, everyone. Bye. Thank you.